Hello, moviegoers, and welcome to another edition of Have You Seen It? I'm your host, Denise, and this week, my movie review comes from Netflix. The name of the movie is titled Wicked Little Letters, and it stars Olivia Coleman. She's the main character, uh, Jesse Buckley, and Timothy Spall. Those are kind of the central characters um, in this movie. Wow. Um, I am a big fan of Olivia Coleman. She is uh, a British actress, and I mean, just about everything I've seen her in, she's she's really, really good. She's one of those actresses who kind of flies under the radar, and then the next thing you know, she's in a movie and nominated for an Oscar, and she wins. So um, she's that type of talent. So this movie is about a town... Um, called Little Hampton. It's in the UK. It's a small town where uh, everybody knows everybody. Everybody's in everybody's business. Um, Everybody knows the comings and goings of their neighbors and people in the community and so forth. Well, when this movie begins, you see our main character, played by Olivia Coleman. She has received the 19th letter, okay? So Edith is a grown woman, a Spencer, who lives at home with her parents. Uh, She's conservative, you know, prim and proper, um, but she lives with a father who's quite domineering and he sets the rules of the house and this is the way that things are going to go and you're going to follow them even though you are a grown ass woman. So that is the main character, Edith. Now her neighbor, Rose, is quite the opposite. She is an Irish immigrant who is a single mother, uh, lives by her own rules. Uh, She has a boyfriend who's black. She does what she wants, comes and goes as she pleases. She's like a guy's girl. You know, she's a good person for guys to throw back beer and whiskey with and play darts with. And she's got the most filthy mouth you've ever heard. So when Edith receives this 19th letter, she opens it. It is riddled with the most profound language that you can think of every curse word that that is on the planet is in this letter and has been in other letters that she has received. And a few people in the town have also received uh, some of these filthy letters. Well, dad is tired of it and he is not going to take it anymore. And he encourages Edith to go to the police. And if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. So of course he marches down to the police station. He's like, you know, we we keep getting these filthy letters. You've got to find out who it is. And of course the police department, uh, you know, is led by a superior who is not really in command of his job, but doesn't have any problem telling other people what to do. And so As the movie progresses and more letters are found and nothing seems to be done about it, the decision has been made that Rose, the filthy mouth single woman, has to be the person who is responsible for all these letters. She's the only person in town with a mouth as filthy as she has and would write these things, dare to, on paper, seal them in envelopes, and mail them all across town. So, you know, as the movie progresses, you know, she is claiming that she is innocent and claims that, hey, we're going to figure out who's really doing this, but it isn't me. If you want to take me to jail, I'll go, but this isn't me. So as the movie moves on and on, The townspeople, some of the townspeople, 
specifically women, kind of, you know, given a side eye, if you will, not only to the police department, but to Edith and her family. And they are just thinking, hmm, maybe it could be someone else. And so the male police officers can't seem to figure this out. But there is a woman named Gladys. She is uh, on the police force and she does what she's told, although she's very smart, intuitive, and really wants to solve this crime, but she's being held back and pushed to the side because she's a woman. Story goes on, story goes on, and I figured out who the culprit was, but as you watch this movie and you watch the bumbling police officers, the town's people who kind of put their heads together and join in and say, hey, I'd like to kind of figure out who's doing this. And all the while, Edith is just continually receiving these letters and she is just aghast and she just doesn't know why she's being targeted and who would do such a thing and blah, blah, blah. If you enjoy British film, uh, you will like this movie. I'm giving this movie like a six or seven. It kind of reminded me of the Banshees of Inna Sharon, that type of movie. And, you know, Olivia Coleman, again, was at her best as this woman who is just being, you know, harassed and doesn't know what to do about it. But at the same time, there may be something going on with Miss Edith. You're just going to have to watch the film. I enjoyed watching the townspeople, you know, plot and scheme and try to figure this out, even though the police department had a different agenda altogether. So that is my review, Wicked Little Letters. You will find that on Netflix. All right, folks, I'm going to jump right into my Nailed It for this week. And since we are on a woman's empowerment uh, theme, um, my Nailed It comes from the movie The Fighter. And the scene with Amy Adams and the confrontation between her and her booze mama and sisters. They come to her house to confront Mark Wahlberg's character. And one of the sisters comes out her mouth wrong to Miss Charlene. Miss Charlene wasn't having it, and they duped it out right there on the front porch for the whole neighborhood to see. It was a real woman's fight. I mean, hair was being pulled, and they were punching and scratching and kicking and hollering and cussing. It was a sight to see. Amy Adams is a phenomenal actress, and she really played that part. So that is my Nailed It for this week, the fighter, Amy Adams as Charlene, and she just basically told the sisters, don't call me a skank. <laughs> All right, folks. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that like button. And remember, we are available on every podcast platform in the universe. Just type in, have you seen it, with Denise, and there I will be. All right, moviegoers, you know what to do. Until next week, I need you to see a movie because I'm going to see a movie. Until next week, bye-bye.